All right, air masses. Now, remember before we talked about these low pressure systems that move across the United States. And as these low pressure systems move across the United States, they have a counterclockwise circulation. So here we see the bubbles spinning around counterclockwise. As the low pressure comes here, you'll notice the air that moves up into New York State is coming from the south. So we have a large mass of air moving to, into our area. And that air mass, that large mass of air, is coming from the south, so it tends to have a little bit warmer characteristics. But as that low pressure system moves across our area, now look where the bubbles are coming from. Now the air that comes into our area is coming from the north, the kind of from Canada, and now that air is generally cool. So the mass of air that comes into our area is a little bit cooler. And we can talk about air masses. We can talk about these large masses of air that move into our area. And here's a map that shows where these large air masses might be coming from. So if we look at this one air mass here, we notice that this air mass is moving into our area kind of from central Canada. So it's going to have the characteristics of that area. It's going to be a little bit cooler. And since it's over land, it's going to be somewhat dry. It's not going to be very moist. And compared to that, we have another air mass down here in the Caribbean Sea. If that air mass moves into our area, that air tends to be a little bit warmer. And since it's formed over the water, it's also going to be a lot more humid as well. In our area, we generally have about five air masses that move into our area. Those five air masses are the continental tropical, maritime tropical, maritime polar, continental polar, and continental ar arctic. So these five, generally speaking, these five types of air masses, right, an air mass is just a large mass of air, move around and these types come into our area. And what we do is we talk about their characteristics. So if I have an air mass that's continental tropical, meaning it formed over a continent, and it's tropical, it's generally a warmer air mass, we say that it's dry and hot. Maritime tropical tends to be humid and hot. Right? That makes sense. Maritime, you think marine, the ocean, tropical, warm. So go ahead and get this copied into your notes. The nice thing is that some of this information about air masses can be found on page 13 in your reference table. So if we turn to page 13 of the reference tables, one section talks about the air masses. It gives the symbol of the air masses, and it gives the name associated with that air mass. So if we look back at your notes, some of this information is already provided for you. The name of the air mass is given to you in the reference tables, and the symbol is given to you in the reference tables. So you don't have to memorize any of that. What you do need to know, though, is what are the characteristics for those Other different types of air masses? Known as meteorologists, say air masses are distinguished by two major characteristics, their temperature and their moisture or humidity. We've got air masses that start off, their name either starts off continental or maritime. If it starts off as continental, if the type of air mass is a continental air mass, it means that that air mass formed over land, right? Continental continents formed over land. And if it formed over land, it tends to be dry. So whenever you see the C to start off an air mass name, that tends to be dry air, right? The opposite is true when we look at the term maritime, right? When we see the term maritime, we think of marine or marine animals. Maritime means that it formed over water, formed over an ocean or the Gulf of Mexico. And so whenever we see an M, we think of that as being very humid air. Uh, you might think M, moist, very humid air. So if you can remember that the continental is land and maritime is water, then you're all set. The ending of the name is usually either a polar air mass, and of course polar means cold, or it's a tropical air mass. Tropical meaning warm or hot. And then there's also the one air mass that's Arctic as well. The continental Arctic ones are very cold, very, very cold air masses that come into our area. If we take a look at this map again, we could label where these are from. The first air mass that we talked about here coming from Canada, um, this air mass here would be a continental polar air mass, CP, because it's continental formed over land. Polar, it's from a colder area coming into our area. If it's from further north, those are the continental 
Arctic air masses, very, very cold air in the dead of winter that come from the North Pole almost. The other polar air masses are maritime polar. If it comes from the northern Pacific and across the United States, or if it comes from the northern Atlantic, we call those maritime polar air masses. The ones from the south are tropical air masses, and if it comes from the over water, we call those maritime tropical air masses. And if it comes from over the land, Arizona, Mexico area, we call those continental tropical air masses. So you know the name of the air mass, you know the symbol, we can get those from our Earth Science reference tables. Again, this is found in your reference tables on page 13 of your ESRTs, your Earth Science reference tables. The other thing that you need to understand is this term, geographic source region. Right? Geographic source region is just a, a, a fancy way to say where something's from. Right? Geographic means the name Right? Geographic is the name of a place. Source is where is it from? Where did it originate? And the region is just a place, an area, a location. Right? So geographic source region is just a, a fancy way to say what the name of a place is, the name of the place where the air mass originated. So whenever you see geographic source region, this term is used quite often, you're thinking about the name of the place where the air mass originated, where it's, if we have a low pressure system here and we see that the air coming into the New York area is coming from the south and I see some bubbles coming from the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, we might say that there's a maritime tropical air mass moving into the area. And that tells us a lot about what's going on with the weather and what sort of weather we could be experiencing. Again, we generally get five different types of air masses. You need to know their characteristics as well as their ge possible geographic source regions.